This is Smart Poker Study, episode 175, sharing the biggest lessons I learned from playing 263 Heads Up Sit and Go matches. I hope you didn't miss my interview with Peter Clark last week, episode 174. He was a killer guest and gave some great poker insights. It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Also, thanks for sharing the show on all those social medias out there. Uh, thanks also for discussing poker in the Facebook discussion group, and of course, for telling your friends. And a very special thanks to my newest Patreon supporter, Patrick Lake. Thank you so much, Patrick. You rock super hard. You started your support this past week, and I truly do appreciate it. I enjoy creating the show on a weekly basis. Your support shows me that you enjoy the show and that you want me to keep on keeping on. To start your own support of the show, go to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. There are different levels of support with different rewards attached. And next week, I'm sending out the February supporter rewards. The podcast is going to be about uh, three bet defense and i will share with you some great stats to help you make your decisions and the training video is going to analyze river missed value spots and this relates to the med monday episode number two where i shared an article with you that was called how you are butchering river play by alex fitzgerald so don't miss out on these rewards Everybody who supports me on Patreon, they'll get the current month's reward, as well as access to the archive of patron-only rewards. For just a few dollars a month, which is less than a buy-in for many of you, you will support the show and receive some valuable poker content in return. So once again, patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. Okay, it's that time. We are finally going to get, and I apologize for keeping you waiting, uh, we're finally going to get to Heads Up Sit and Go Poker Talk. Make sure you visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 175. And while you are there, you can sign up for the weekly boost so that you can get my Excel-based Heads Up Sit and Go Tracker. This is what I use to track my own 263 Heads Up Sit and Goes played back in December. So go to the show notes page and get it for yourself. Alrighty, let's do this. Gambate. This is damn exciting stuff. So back in the day, I was strictly a sit-and-go player with a few MTTs thrown in. Uh, I just really loved this form of poker, but I eventually moved to cash games because I think they're more profitable for me. Plus, you can come and go super quick and easy. There's no, you know, 30-minute, 45-minute where you got to be sitting at that table until you got knocked out, you know. And I still do occasionally play them for some fun. Uh, there was a time when I was struggling with them back in the day, and I found myself... Really, I was getting in second place and third place way too often. Uh, I'm sure that you all know how the money is in sit and goes. And of, of course, you know, same thing for MTTs. All the money is up top in first place. Uh, min cashing just isn't that profitable. I wanted to improve my sit and go results and I was tired of losing when I got down to heads up play. So I figured I'd work on this by playing 100 heads up sit and goes. And at the time, this seemed like it would be the quickest way to improve those heads up skills. And it totally worked. My win rate started to inch up gradually and I was paying more attention to my opponent's stats, what type of player they were, even though you know, when you get down to heads up in a sit and go, it's really short stack stuff and there's a lot of pushing and folding. But once you learn your opponent's tendencies, even at those short stacks, you can take advantage of maybe overfolding, overcalling, uh, overshoving, that kind of stuff. Well, um, back in November, I felt that my cash game play, it was becoming a bit too robotic. I was making decisions based on my cards and my position more so than what I should be doing, you know, cards, position, but also on my opponent that I was up against. I wasn't exploiting my opponents like I should have. Uh, it was like I viewed every opponent the same, and I was making quote-unquote standard plays over and over again. By not adjusting to the specific opponent that I was up against, I had a terrible month of cash game losses in November. Uh, it totaled negative $113, which is about 4.5 buy-ins, and uh, my win rate was negative 9.3 big blinds per 100 hands in November. You know, everybody has losing months, so it's not the worst, you know, it's not the end of the world that I had a losing month, but I really do believe that it came from playing too robotic and not adjusting to my opponents. So I knew that this was my issue, this robotic playing was my issue. And I figured another heads up set and go challenge would really help and it would force me to play the player just over and over again. So 
I had planned to play 100 heads up sit and go matches in December, but I blew that number away by playing 263 matches, and it was a great experience. Let me go over my results for you. So, like I said, 263 matches I played. They ranged from $1.50 up to $7, and I won 50.2% of them, just over half, uh, which, of course, wasn't enough to break even. My total losses were $20.04. And this is actually not so bad considering the total rake I paid was $22 even. But with the $20 loss, my ROI, my return on investment, was still negative 3.55%, which ended up meaning I lost $0.08 cents per every match I played. Now, I like these losses better than November's negative $113 in the cash games. I did miss out on lots of cash game experience in December by playing all these heads up sit goes, but I don't regret the challenge I, I, I took up because I learned a ton from playing all of these matches. And before I get to lessons learned from the challenge, let me cover some more numbers for you. Altogether, I bought in for $564.16. My winnings were $544.16 and 12 cents. So you could see that difference right there of $20 and 4 cents. When I was about 50 matches into my challenge, I decided to calculate the break-even percentages for playing these matches. Now, the break-even percentage depends on the amount of rake you're playing. For the rake, the faster the tournament speed, the lower the rake. So if we look at $1.50 heads up sit and goes, for example, at the hyper turbo level, the buy-in is $1.50. The rake is only 6 cents which makes uh, for a 4% rake. At the turbo speed, the rake is 9 cents, or 6%. And the reg speed, the rake is 12 cents, or 8%, which is just, you know, it's double the hyper turbo speed. When you calculate the break-even point, all you have to do is take the total buy-in cost and divide it by the amount you can win. So for those $1.50 hypers, you pay $1.50. But because they take 12 cents total from you, or you know, 6 cents from you and 6 cents from your opponent, they take 12 cents out. When you win, you actually get $2.88. If you take that $1.50 divided by $2.88, the break-even point is 52.1%. So over 1,000 matches, for example, if you win exactly 521 of them, you'll break even between the rake you pay, the losses you take, and the money that you win. At that turbo 6% rake, the break-even point is 53.2%, and the reg speed 8% rake level has a break-even point of 54.3%. So as I continued in the challenge after I calculated this, I played way more hyper turbos because I realized the value was better there. I can play more matches in one day, and I pay less rake per match. If I ever become a heads-up sit-and-go expert, I would probably stick to hypers. So I learned a ton from this challenge. Let me talk about the various lessons I learned. Uh, the first is play the player. So this challenge really forced me to pay attention to the opponent I was up against. If they were passive and calling everything, I would only build the pot pre-flop with strong hands, and I would keep my bluffs to a minimum post-flop. If my opponent was overly foldy, pre or post of course, then I would open the pot wider, I would 3-bet bluff a little bit more frequently, and I would throw out plenty of c-bet bluffs, and I would bet when they checked post flop. And the great thing about this is, since completing the challenge, I am playing the player so much more often in my cash games, and my January profits, and so far in February, my play is so much more improved and I'm making money in cash games these past two months. The next lesson I learned, stay aggressive until they fight back. So we know, poker is a game of aggression, and normally aggression just rakes in the chips. It's a great strategy in heads up sit and goes to play aggressively until your opponent decides to fight back. If they keep limping then folding preflop, keep raising. If they continually fold the c-bets, keep c-bet bluffing, but check behind when you have a value hand. If they fight back against your aggression, then you can start to tighten up. Choose stronger, more narrow ranges preflop, and make most of your c bets for value as opposed to bluffs if they're fighting back with calls or raises. There is no place more profitable to do the opposite of your opponent than when you're playing in heads up sit and goes. I've always said don't fight fire with fire. If your table is full of nits, don't knit it up along with them. Instead, get loose and start stealing more and pushing them off their hands. If your table's full of maniacs, tighten up and strictly go for value. If everyone's a tight aggressive player, get slightly more aggressive than they are. 
three bet them with a lot of uh, a lot of strong hands and some bluffs of course three bet them with position in the cutoff and the button and also do a lot more calling from there as well basically be looser in position when all of your opponents are tight aggressive all of the heads up sit and go matches i played taught me the value of remaining aggressive as long as your opponent lets you the next lesson keep your cool and wow i learned this right away it's a must to keep your cool in heads up sit and goes there's no quicker way to get angry and go on tilt you are playing heads up with one player and of course you want to beat them you gain a real quick sense of their skills and right away you can tell who's the stronger player you or your opponent when a weaker player when they win like hand after hand after making stupid plays against you it can get you super angry and honestly i experienced this over and over again my tendency towards revenge tilt and entitlement tilt were a big problem early on maybe in the first you know one through 30 heads up sit and go matches i played for me it was worse at regular speeds and turbo speeds the longer tournaments went on versus a weak player uh, the more likely i was to get frustrated that i hadn't beat this freaking fish yet in those reg speed matches the action is just so slow and mistakes made at those lower blind levels don't cost your opponent doesn't cost your opponent that much you know when blinds get higher faster in turbos and especially hyper turbos your opponents make more frequent and more costly mistakes and getting back to those reg speeds when the blinds are at like 10 20 for five minutes and you've been dealt crap hands for 30 hands in a row it can get you agitated try to keep your cool and wait for your opponent to make a mistake remember the biggest thing in any kind of form of poker that you play is that you're constantly making positive ev decisions Getting frustrated and playing with crap hands and trying to force the action is not positive EV poker. The next lesson. We all know this, but it's great when you play a form of poker that really hits at home. Position rocks. It is an incredible advantage in poker. And it's critical in heads up sit and goes. Just try pulling off a few out of position bluffs against competent players. Man, those loose passive and loose aggressive players, they make playing out of position post flop extremely difficult. In general, you should be running way fewer bluffs out of position, especially versus opponents who are not going to fold. Heads up sit and go matches, they see the flop, the turn, and they see the river so often, especially in those early levels. You must make good pre-flop decisions when you know you'll be out of position post-flop. The next lesson was to pay attention to bet sizing. One of the most useful tells I saw was my opponent's bet sizing. Way too many of them, they made a min bet when bluffing, while simultaneously they would make like a two-thirds or three-quarter pot size bet with their value hands. It's like they are not keeping their cool. They're trying to win the tournament right now with their top pairs, their two pairs, and their sets. Here's a great study method after playing two or three matches with one opponent. Go through their showdown hands and see the bet sizing that they use street by street. Also look at the hands where they bet and then fold it on that same street. Take note on their bet sizing and look for patterns to exploit in your next match with them. All this heads up sit and go play helped to solidify an important poker maxim. Small bets equal bluff and big bets equal value. The final lesson, improve your short stacked play. For heads up sit and go players, the short stacked game must be studied. You'll often find yourself below 20 big blinds versus a patient opponent. When this happens, it's easy to get to sub 10 big blind play. Get comfortable with using push fold charts and with calling all in shoves. I recommend Jonathan Little's app. It's called Float the Turn Poker app, and it's been updated to include all in calling ranges as well as push fold charts. Have the app open on your phone as you play your matches. The more you use it, the more comfortable you'll become and the optimal hands will start to become ingrained in your game. It's going to take some practice and off the felt study to become comfortable with short stacked play. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com slash smart poker study. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, computer. And of course they have my two books available, How to Study Poker Volumes 1 and 2. A few minutes ago, I took a look in audible.com for other poker books. And for the live players out there, I found a couple books that may be pretty interesting. Uh, they're both by Zachary Elwood. One is called Verbal Poker Tells, and the other is called Exploiting Poker Tells. I think in the future, when I do take up more live poker play, um, I'll definitely be getting these kinds of audiobooks because I think 
players in a live setting, they do give away a ton of information. So if you do end up getting these audiobooks, or if you've read them already, let me know what you thought of them via the socials or send me an email because I'm thinking about getting these books for myself. Once again, go to audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy to get your free audiobook and a 30-day free trial. And I got a few little shout outs today. Cody T purchased Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. And for doing so, I sent him some links to some killer videos to help him get the most out of Poker Tracker 4. And I sent him my Smart HUD just for supporting me with that Poker Tracker 4 purchase. If you want to get it for yourself, smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker 4. And Nathan Segrist purchased the Mashing the Micros webinar. He is going to take his micro game to the next level. He's probably playing with me, exploiting me. He's taking all that I know, that all that I shared in that webinar, and he's using it against me and taking my hard-earned money. That's okay, Nathan. I can deal with it. I'll get you back, buddy. And also, a special thanks to Jack Nixon. Uh, In a prior podcast, I mentioned that I'm suffering from some elbow elbow pain, and he recommended these awesome bands, these extensor bands for your hands that help to develop the muscles in that area that are supposed to relieve uh, that, that elbow pain that I'm suffering. So thank you very much for those, Jack. I am waiting for those to arrive in the mail from Amazon, and I do appreciate the suggestion. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. I hope some of you are thinking, maybe this heads up sit and go challenge is for me. Well, I think it is, and I think it's for anybody who plays any form of No Limit Hold'em. Now, if you're a cash game player, there's three reasons why you want to take this up. Reason number one, you'll get experience adjusting to just one opponent. You adjust your game to them, and they adjust theirs to you. Then, you're forced to readjust to their adjustments. This is great practice for cash games when you never know who you'll face in any given hand. Reason number two, you can experiment with post-flop plays. With so many hands getting to the flop, you have so many opportunities to experiment with bet sizing, donk leads, floats, raises, check raises, just check calling down every single street. You also get plenty of out of position experience as well. And reason number three for cash game players, you have fun and you shake things up a bit so you can get out of any cash game rut you might be in. And of course, this challenge is great for sit and go and MTT players as well, because it forces you to do quite a few things. It forces you to ditch the tight playing style that you might be comfortable with. You're forced to try out different styles of play and see how they fare versus differing opponents. You get to practice adjusting to different opening levels or opening ranges and defending against various ranges. You also learn how hands change value in heads up play versus six max or versus full ring play. Like for example, top pair is way more valuable heads up than in a full ring game. You get plenty more flop turn and river experience, which is what every sit and go and MTT player needs. You're forced to play out of position in half of the hands that you play and you play those over various streets, which that experience is just gonna make you a stronger, more adaptive player. You also get in the habit of paying attention to game flow and tailoring your moves based on your recent history in the match. And you get plenty of short stack experience to improve your push fold and your all in calling game. So like I said at the outset, I've made my uh, heads up sit and go Excel based tracker available to you through the show notes. The Excel spreadsheet, it calculates your total dollars won or lost, the dollars won or lost per match, your ROI and the percent of matches that you won. There's actual space to record 100 different matches, but you can easily elongate the sheet by adding more rows. It allows you to record the date, the buy-in amount you paid, the rake, the amount you won, the site you played on, and any necessary notes that you might want to take. So before we close this puppy up, before I give you the challenge, I will be doing this again, not for a full month, but probably for like one week every quarter of the year. So When I do this, there are three things that I'm going to do better for myself next time. Number one is I'm going to study. Uh, Last time in December, I just did some cursory studies, but nothing like I could have done. There's so much heads up, sit and go material out there. So many videos, so many articles to watch. You know, next time I will spend a lot more time studying and I'll get more out of the challenge by studying properly. The second thing I'll do better for next time is I'm going to create ranges. 
I'll take the time to make some ranges for opening the pot and for defending against open raises. I flew by the seat of my pants as I played last time, and I did fairly well. But I would like to create well-planned ranges using Flopzilla and while I'm considering the wider ranges that I'll be up against. There's probably some optimal range of hands I could be playing, maybe like opening 60 or 70% and the defending 30 or 40. I don't know what it is, I'm going to have to figure it out. I would of course deviate as necessary, I mean, if the guy's folding all the time, of course I'm going to be opening deuce 4 offsuit, that kind of a thing. But I think creating ranges will at least give me some, uh, like a good mathematical base to work from. And the third thing I'm going to do the next time I take up this challenge is I am going to create a heads up sit and go HUD. I just used my smart HUD as I played. And about five matches in, I realized that this HUD just isn't good enough for heads up sit and go play. For one thing, there's so much more space on the table now. You've only got two players. So it's like 80% of the table is available for different HUDs and stats to be just plastered all over the screen. With this, there's almost no need for pop-ups. I can have a separate big blind and a small blind HUD. And I can also make a post-flop in position and a post-flop out of position HUD. I did a quick Google search and I saw tons of images for heads up sit and go HUDs. I'm just going to have to find one that looks good and copy it for my own use. You know, if you've seen my YouTube channel or you've heard podcasts, you know, where I talked about Poker Tracker 4 HUDs and pop-ups before, you know that I enjoy building HUDs and I'm pretty good at it. So I probably won't be buying one, but I'll be creating one um, based on what I see from others. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Take up your own heads up, sit and go challenge. Try it for just 30 matches. You can do this in a couple days easily, especially with those less costly hyper turbo formats. Download and use the tracker from the show notes and let me know how it goes. Now it's your turn to take action and scrappy dappy do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. This episode is not complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod175. Sign up for the weekly boost and get that Excel-based tracker for yourself. And hey, if you don't want to track heads up and goes, whatever. Just use that tracker to track whatever else you want. Thank you so much for listening today. Please enable my Alexa flash briefing skill. Just search for Smart Poker Study in the Amazon Alexa store so that you can hear these multiple weekly episodes coming at you. You can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please send me your questions, sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Alrighty, poker people, next week in episode 176, I'll throw another Q&A your way. Get those questions in now. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker peeps. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.